Welcome to 1850 Main Street, a place where friends get together and talk about their country and hope for a brighter future. Your hosts have built this spot over the past 40 years, meeting every day with people who are in the headlines and behind the real stories. Today, Rob Walgate and Alan C. Duncan from the Public Square are joined by David Zanotti, the CEO of the American Policy Roundtable. Is our election process broken because it was built on the assumption that people would behave honestly? You guys started a fight last time we were talking, and we got to get this thing settled Uh because uh, this is this concept of the election being fractured is very problematic. So I looked at all the different articles we've been passing around each other and, 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 and talking about, is the system broken? Now, one thing we've got to get out, and, and I pray God that people will circulate these programs. I, I, I hope people will do it. Because the stuff that we're telling you here, you're not hearing on Fox News because the people on Fox News don't do elections for a living. They do election reporting for a living. But they probably spend, in these cable networks all combined, they probably spend much more money on hair and makeup than they do on research. There's a difference. This is what we do. And we're not alone. There are others who do it as well on the ground. So let's talk about how broken this system is. Let's do it in a a, a hypothetical case study. Let's just say that we had $10 million dollars. Now, compared to the billions that will be sent on this election, $10 million isn't even a rounding error. I mean, the IRS probably wouldn't even investigate $10 million or the FEC. It's that, this is pennies in the process. Depending what position you were at, yeah. I'm kidding. Let's, <laughs> let's just say we had $10 million and we said, okay, there's five critical swing states. So let's invest $2 million in each of those states. All right, so this, and now it's even like a smaller number. And here's the deal. We know that a swing state right now can be won or lost by 5,000 votes, certainly to 50,000. So the zone is between 5 and 50,000. We saw it on a national election eight years ago. In 16, and we saw it in 20. We've seen it over and over again. We saw it in 76 with Jimmy Carter. So we say, okay, we got the right five states. We got some money. Now, what's what's our goal and our objective? Our goal and objective is to find a maximum of 50,000 votes. Probably get pretty excited if we get to 30. May even make the difference if we get to five. So what do we got to do? We got to find votes. You got to find votes. Well, if you just start banging on doors or walking up and down streets, that's, you know, two million bucks isn't going to last. You're going to need two years. And guess what? We've only got a few weeks left. Are you giving people ideas on this program? So let's just say what we did was say, okay, let's go ahead and think about what's out there that we could utilize. Well, if you were influencing people, who receive these federal voter information forms, uh, who are not legally here as citizens, but were given a government form. And if you could get a serious rumor campaign or some other kind of campaign where those people were encouraged to register to vote within legal deadlines, depending on when you're hearing this, we understand there's a legal deadline, and and you had 10,000 people register to vote who are thinking they were doing the right thing, They would be on the voter rolls. Now, here's the thing. I'm not suggesting that that would be legal. There is a truly fraudulent criminal element in that. The question is, how long would it take to prove that it was criminal and fraudulent? That's important because all election law is connected to a ticking clock. Somebody trademark that for us, okay? Because we seem to be the only people in America who keep saying it. All election law is connected to a ticking clock. So part of our strategy is to use our $2 million in X state is to get the coordinated effort to get those people to register to vote in time and then just ask them, did you vote? Encourage them to vote. Well, that's illegal. Yes, it is illegal. Are you suggesting they should break the law? Of course not. This is theoretical. My question is, if they did that and they got 10,000 people registered to vote and those 10,000 people participated, how would you prove that conspiracy to break the law before Inauguration Day on the presidential election? Because the votes were cast in November. By January, the first week of January, the Electoral College sits, meets, and counts the votes. 
Those 10,000 are not going to be able to be discombobulated, thrown out of the system in time. There's just not enough time. So somebody could break that rule. Next, let's go to a bunch of college campuses. Now, this one, think about this one. College campuses, you got all kinds of out-of-state residents who maybe they live in a, let's say a person lives in, in, um, in California, all right, and, and, and we want them to vote blue. We want them to vote for Democrats. Well, their vote in California means nothing because Californians are dominated by the Democrat Party. But let's say they live in a swing state like Michigan. So say they're up there in Michigan and they could be in one of any of the state universities there or any university there or college. And we get them to register to vote in Michigan. Now I got a California vote in Michigan where it matters a lot more than it does in California. Is there anything illegal about that? Absolutely not. As long as they don't vote in both places. Only problem is it's really hard to catch them voting in both places because there's still not a completely synchronized voting registration between states. So you could move from one state to another, whether you're in college or not, and it take four years for you to fall off the rolls in one state, and you could go to cast your ballot in the state of your new residence only to be informed that you've already voted. Oh, yeah, you could do it, and if you get caught, you're going to get charged after the fact. Your vote is not nullified. Right. Nothing happens in regards right. to that, but you can be prosecuted. So we've got $2 million to spend in five key states. We just went out and got a bunch of, of, of votes in, in communities of people who are illegally here as residents. We just went legally into the college structures and pulled 10,000 additional of that. Now let's send a group of people. You in, got more ideas? Oh, let's send people into nursing homes where people are legally permitted and registered to vote. Um, first off, we'll make sure they're registered. Secondly, let's start doing seminars for these, these folks in nursing homes. And let's go ahead and start to recruit people to vote. And oh, by the way, it just so happens that you can have all the opinions you want. You slide it in the direction of one party or the next, and you come back and in the part of the seminars, you tell, well, bring your ballot with you. Let's go through. Let's just, bah, 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 bah. Next thing you know, you're, you're helping these people fill out these ballots. You're not doing it with your hand. You're not doing it with your pen, but you're doing it with your voice, which is legal in the realm of free speech. And now you picked up another 10,000 votes across that key swing state by calling on communities of people that live in those kinds of facilities. Now I just picked up 30,000 votes. Well, and I will say this, um, having some family members who are kind of in and out of facilities like that, very aged, 90 plus, they're in a unique spot in life where they actually are quite receptive to a nudge politically. Sure. I've seen I've seen some people have to have some wild political beliefs that you're like, ah, that really isn't founded upon much true information, but they really, really b believe it strongly. So that that's a very vulnerable population for that type of thing, I think. Now, th this may be causing people to be screaming at their computer or at their phone right yeah, now. I was going to uh, ask for some good news at some point. Right, they're, 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 uh, look, we do elections. We've been doing them for 45 years. We know where the holes in the laws are. And because it's almost impossible to have a perfect law and laws are not designed to proactively prohibit behavior. They're designed to penalize bad behavior after the fact. And elections are laws that have ticking clocks connected. So to prosecute something that's illegal, you've got to beat the clock in court before the election is certified or else you're coming back into a courtroom and asking them to retroactively cancel the results of an election, which almost never happens. But of the three scenarios, only one of them was illegal. The nursing home situation, the elderly uh, uh, involvement is, is legal. The college involvement is legal. Now, add that to all the other social media manipulation that is designed to direct people's attentions. Oh, and you might also do something that's been done in the past too, people don't realize. You could go buy the information from the cable companies and find out where people in key swing precincts are watching television or watching streaming video content, find out what they're watching, what commercials they're watching as well. And you could literally direct commercial advertising into those homes with that data and information. You could spend some of your bucks doing that. Do you want to know who and what is going to be on your ballot this November? 
Check out iVoters.com and enter your address and zip code. No name, no phone number, and no email address required. Find out who all the candidates are, who's endorsing them, and who's funding them. We're not bound to any political parties, candidates, or campaigns at iVoters, and we won't tell you who to vote for. You're smart enough to figure that out for yourself. What we will do is give you all the facts and none of the fanfare. Did we mention it's free? Free minds, free speech, free agents. iVoters.com, a public service of the American Policy Roundtable. I understand and hear you with the paper ballots and the way things that should be done. But with the technology that we have today, couldn't we do it in a way to where we have the voter rolls, we have everything on, and then once someone votes, in essence, their green light shows up and this person voted. Um, of course. It, I mean, there, there seems like simpler ways to monitor and audit the process than what we do and take advantage of technology and doing it that way. And here's the, the fundamental problem with all of this. And this is, for, is, in addition to the fact that it's being done right now, some of this stuff was being done as long ago as 1960. All right. The stuff it's a that, business. That's, it's a business. Today, it is a business. I'm not opposed to the, the legal entities of super PACs, nor would I advocate that we should try to attempt to stop people from spending money and free speech in elections. But what we have done is so fractured the process of voting that we have created spaces for people to come in as corporate entities. Sure, they're not technically a for-profit uh, corporation. Sure, they're a PAC, which is a different entity. They're not tax deductible. We get all that. But they have legal status to exist to do this. They've turned it into an industry. And people can make a lot of money doing this. So in addition to the $2 million I got for operating expenses, how about if I plug a nice bonus in that if you can show me the numbers when it comes time for the vote? And that is a very, uh, now I get to build a new wing on my house and buy a brand new car and put my kids through school. We've turned this into a business. And how did it happen? It happened when we began to tear at the threads and fracture the process of voting, which used to be two things. One, exceptionally simple. Show up on the day. We'll give you the pencil and paper. Fill it out. We got the count from here. Thank you. Just sign your name, which brings us to the second point. It's all been built on trust. And that's why the system is broken. Because people aren't honest the way they used to be honest about voting. We've pulled up, apart the pieces and in the seams and in the cracks have become political operatives who can't be condemned for being criminal because three of the four ideas that I suggested are technically legal. And the fourth one would be almost impossible to prosecute. So are they technically doing anything wrong? They didn't get caught. They didn't go to jail. They're just good at what they do. And if you want to win an election, you better do the same thing. So when people say, I feel like the system's broken, really, are they wrong? I would say it's not broken in totality, smashed and on the ground. But I'd say our country right now, when it comes to elections, it, it's, it's like someone trying to walk on a broken leg. And the people that are doing this have a passion for seeing things done a certain way. It's for some, in some cases, there's, it's a religion. It's, it's a religious passion. Yes. They are so convinced on both sides. They can be so convinced. Now, that brings up the really difficult question. And that is, which party does it more? Depends um, which state you live in. <laughs> which party does it better? Oh, I think that one's easy. <laughs> which party does it more frequently? But what's interesting is, when's the last time anyone's heard this conversation anywhere, on any podcast, on any national radio program, on any cable news setup? When has someone come in and broken down the methodologies of how you can bend, break, get inside the fissures, get inside the cracks, and push the system in your direction and get away with it? 
So for somebody listening to this show who who is is feeling almost despair or hopeless at this thing, well, my vote isn't going to matter. What what do we say to that person? Okay, close. That's a really close analysis. But if you'll forgive me, it's incredibly myopic. Each vote matters. This makes every legal vote matter all the more. Because if you pull the legal votes out, you pull the informed votes out, you pull the people that are doing the right thing the right way, regardless of where they stand on the issues. I'm not talking about a monolithic perfection here. If the people who are going to do the right thing the right way stop, then all we have left is the people who are doing it the wrong way. It's like the old, it's it's the whole story of It's a Wonderful Life. If you're not there, you bring Pottersville into absolute reality right now. Yeah. So somebody feeling discouraged and like, well, I'm not going to, uh, maybe I just won't vote. Then. It's a thousand yeah. times more important yeah. that you vote. That's the opposite of what we're trying to convey. Exactly. Yes. It is a thousand times more impo- important that w- the people who are going to do the right thing the right way do it. And 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 that's why when we do iVoters.com, we do not target parties we do not target issues. We do not target uh, regions. We we encourage everyone to vote legally and ethically the right way, period. It, so much so to the fact that I've been in meetings where we've been having meetings with people and the meetings ended because they wanted to do that very thing. <laughs> and sometimes a lot of money walked out of the room. Yeah. I wasn't going to say it, but yeah. 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 And as a nonprofit, you can't do iVoters without money. It just, you, nobody does it. No, no one's willing to give you that all that time. So how do you monetize it? Yeah. How do you monetize it? <laughs> we, should, we should end with that story. Remember, remember that story? We're sitting uh, on media row uh, at the Republican National Convention in 16. Uh, and and we were there to cover it for the public square. We're a nonpartisan. All right? We also had people at the Democrat convention in 16. Yeah, we were right next to NPR Boston. Okay? Right, we, right, we, were, right. we became good buddies with NPR Boston that day. Those were <laughs> wonderful people. We yeah, enjoyed were, that immensely. Yeah. So we take off for lunch one day and we're sitting in this, in this cool diner at, in, in Cleveland, Ohio. And, and one of the big wig type guys is sitting there and uh, he's at, you know, he's, he's by himself. And so you could be consultant guys just chat, chatting back and forth. And what do you guys do? So Rob starts telling him about iVoters.com and Alan and I are sitting like watching this unfold, right? It's like, this is great. So the guy is, is they're going about and he's asking questions and Rob's explaining and the guy's like, wow, that's, pretty impressive. How long you've been doing this? You guys like had to be first thought. Yeah, we were one of the first. NPR said that your site's one of the best five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. He got all the data. He had it. He figured it out. And he said, well, how do you monetize it? We don't. We give it away. At which point, I I don't know whether it was a choke moment or a spit take, (laughs) but the guy almost fell off the stool. He couldn't believe it sitting at the counter that someone actually had something to do in the American political process that wasn't monetized, that the idea wasn't to how do we make money doing this? Not just to cover costs. I understand that. We give it away. Now, then the next question is, you give it away. Well, how many people that get the information actually then turn around and support it? Almost none. Why is that? Because Americans are convinced that voting information, no matter who it comes from or how they get it, should be absolutely free. We want to make sure they have the truth. So we'll spend our money to make sure that. You could give them, you could, and every time somebody goes on iVoters, it is amazing. It's like getting not just the cliff notes, okay, but it's, it, you're getting the questions that's coming on the test. Yeah. All right. So all your homework's done. You are complete. You have it. You can walk into the polling place and instead of spending like 10, 15, have you, I've seen some of these people in there, 15, 18, 20, 25 minutes. It's got to drive the poll workers crazy. You walk in, boom, 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 turn, bam, 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 turn, turn, and you're out. And they're going like, what? It's like having the math textbook and you can flip to the back and you see the answer That's key. That's it. Just put the answers in because you've already made up your of mind. You've the made your decisions. Yeah. You can even <laughs> take the darn thing in with you on your cell phone. Right. And, and it's that yeah, simple. Because it's not a test. Right. Yeah. yeah you're it's, not it's, being graded. It's, it's, <laughs> just, it's just that simple. And so, and, and people won't pay for that. No, because Americans are conditioned yeah. in their DNA that voting information. Well, how do you pay for it? We go around to people of goodwill who believe that voting the right way is virtuous and good for the country. And we ask them and beg them to either give us their services for free, their time, their energy, their technologies or 
to help us financially so we can pay the bills. And it operates, it, there's, it's a nonprofit construction. There's no profit made on iVoters.com. It's strictly a service to people. That's the idea. And furthermore, there's no rating of candidates because we our opinion doesn't matter. When you're in that booth, it's up to you. We provide endorsements of other organizations, those on the far right, those on the far left, those in the middle. We provide them all so that you can have all that data to make an educated decision when it's time to vote. Okay, so somebody call Rogan. I mean, for crying out loud, all these big guys in the podcasting world ought to be voluntarily helping with iVoters.com. Maybe he'll interview Rob. Who knows? <laughs> the conversations are just getting started. To get connected, check out 1850MainStreet.com. And to get the facts on the candidates and issues that are going to be on your ballot this November, visit iVoters.com and enter your address and zip code. No name, no phone number, and no email address required. We don't want your personal information and we don't want your money. We want you to be well informed. So please share this podcast and iVoters.com with a friend today so they too can vote with confidence and encourage others to do the same. Thanks for stopping by today. We'll see you next time here at 1850 Main Street. 